Okay, so we're going to continue with the tutorial. Okay. So, 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 I was at problem 7, so let's go to problem 8. Okay, tutorial on linear block codes. Okay, so, so the 8th question, this case is, there is a linear code C. And uh, okay, so 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 the linear code has uh, at least one or weight for blood. Okay, so it also has uh, so 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 okay. So first of all. Can a linear code be full of only odd weight code words? Is that possible? It's not possible. Right? First of all, linear code should have odd zero, that is even weight. And then if you take two odd weight code words, then add it together, you get an even weight code word. So if it's a, if at all a non-trivial code, then any non-trivial code should have at least one even weight code word. Okay, so it has, now this information is a little bit more. It says this linear code has at least one odd weight code word. Okay, so if it has at least one odd weight code word, then suppose we define these two sets, CE equals okay, and then CO which is okay, so these two are subsets of the code. Okay, so we have to show size of CE equals size of CU. Okay, so that is the eighth problem. Okay. So you can see hopefully this question is clear, right? So you have a code word, it has some odd weight code words, that's some even weight code words. Okay. Right? So so clearly these two sets will not overlap, right? There'll be no overlap in these two sets and together they will make the entire code C. Okay, so those two things are very obvious, but now we have to show that the size of CE, the number of even weight code words, equals the number of odd weight code words. Okay, so any strategies? Okay, so you have to do some uh, some work. So there's some suggestion about how you can take all the even weight code words and take one of the odd weight code words and add it to this, and then what do you get? Okay, then what do you do? Okay, so, so, so yeah, I think you're kind of sometimes kind of coset approach. Yeah. Now the coset is like all coset generate a sense of really all if I take a word and I add it to all other words, then it should generate a coset. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, there are various ways of thinking about it, but you're, you're kind of getting to the to the right approach. But I, I'll try to prove it in one or two ways, and then you will see. Uh, you, you might like some, you may not like something else, but well, there are multiple ways of proving this result. Okay, so the first uh, method is the following. Suppose you think of a generator matrix for this code. Okay, so there's going to be a generator matrix for this code. Okay, there will be let's say n generators. You want to be two. Sorry, I'll be k generators. Okay, so I'll take the first part to be even, the first few to be even, and the remaining to be odd. Okay. So, if the code has even one odd weight code word, then the number of odd weight vectors in the generator matrix cannot be zero. Right? Suppose if there is no odd part, then what does it mean? The code will have only even weight code words. Okay? So, there should be at least one odd weight row in the generator matrix. Just so you collect all the odd weight weights and put them together, collect all the even weight weights and put them together. So, what is an, what is an arbitrary code word? An arbitrary code word is you take messages. And multiply on the left. Okay, how can I get an even weight code word? Okay, I can add any number of even weight codes. I will only get even. For odd, what should I do? Even. I should take only an even number. Okay, so here the first part can be anything, and then this part has to be even. This is for an odd weight code word. 
What about an even weight C? What if I want an even weight code word? Oh, this is for even weight. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, suppose I want odd weight, what do I do? Okay. Right? What do I do for an even weight? Even weight is it? Here, here it can be anything. And then among the odd I need even, right? Is that clear? We need even there and here it can be anything. For odd weight what can happen? Okay. Again the even weight part can be anything, it doesn't matter. I mean, whatever you put there, you only get even weight. So, for the odd weight part, what should I do? I should have an odd number of them. Okay. I should have an odd number of them. So, now here, you can explicitly count the number of even weight code words and odd weight code words and show that they have to be equal. Okay. So, what, so how many, how many such messages do you have? First part is anything. So, that is 2 power something times. For the remaining part, you only want even weight vectors. So, that will be 2 power how many ever odd numbers you have minus 1, so overall it will be 2 power k minus 1. Okay, so from this argument you see number of odd weight code words equals 2 power k minus 1 and it also equal to number of even weight code words. Okay, so this is more of a uh, I mean a workshop kind of proof, you know, when you do all the hard work, you literally find out how many code words are there and do all, how many messages are there. So that's one way of doing it. Another way is to observe that C E is actually a subcode. So you go back and look at the C E. Set of all even weight code words. Okay, so it's a subset of C I said it's also a subcode. What do I mean by subcode? C E by itself is also a linear code. Okay. So, you, how do you prove that? You take any two code words in C and then add it to itself, what will you get? You will get, uh, you will get another code. Okay, so that will happen. Okay. And then, so then the question we have to ask is, okay, so this is a subcode. So, you can take C and partition it into cosets of C, right? So, that will be what you can always do. If you have a bigger group and then you have a subgroup, that subgroups cosets form a partition of C, right? C, C is uh, the process of C partition C, right? Okay. So then you have to argue that C O is a coset of C. Okay. You can argue very easily. So this is quite easy to see. And then from here also you can also argue that C O is a coset of C. Okay. That is the point that. Uh, you are making about how you take one odd weight code word and add it to all the even weight code words, you will get all the odd words. So, how do you show that C O is a coset of C? How do you show that? Yeah, so see, now well, let's be a little bit more careful here. How do you show, see, how do you show something is a subcode? You add any two things, you should be inside the subcode, right? That happens for C E, it is easy to show it is a subcode. How do you show C O is a coset of C E? What is the property satisfied by two vectors in the coset of a code? The difference should be in the code. That is the idea, right? See, any two things in the coset will be the same translation will be there. U plus C. So, what is the, what is the property of a coset? You take one vector and then add it to all the code words, right? So, if you take any two vectors in the coset and subtract them, what will happen? The common addition will go away and then you will end up back in the code. Okay, so that is the property of a coset of a code. Okay. So you can show that very easily with C O. You take any two odd code words, odd, odd weight code words, and then add them, what happens? You get an even weight code word and you go back into the coset, into the into C. What is the question? But, uh, how do we know that C O how do we know that the coset of C formed by adding this or not uh, That's not what I'm saying. I'm not showing that. I'm just showing that C O is a coset of C. Okay. I am not going to show anything else. I am going to show C E is a subcode and I am going to show C O is the entire C O is a coset of C E. Now what is C E union C O? 
equal to C. So that shows the partitioning of C in terms of the code and its coset is basically C E and C O. Okay, so there are only two cosets for C E itself and C O, and both of them have to have the same size. Coset and code will have the same size. You're okay? So that's how we prove it. So this is more of a slick proof which uses properties of cosets and subgroups and all that, kind of hides the details. But the proof, the original proof I gave you, the general matrix gives you all the details and how to go about doing it. So both, some people like the other proof, some people like this proof, depending on your taste, you might like one proof or the other. Okay? So, so you show she was the concept of CE, so we do some proof here, and then you claim this, this is happening, right? So C B union C O equals C, and that implies uh, only two cosets. Okay, so two cosets and size of C O equals size of C O. So in fact, it's enough if you show C O as a coset of C E, you don't have to worry about the partitioning and all that. Okay. So the reason why the partitioning is important is from this you can show size of C O and size of C E equals 2 power k minus 1. If I only want to show size of C O is equal to size of C E, it's enough if I show C O is a coset of C. Because cosets in the original code have the same size. That's enough. But if I want to show both of them are equal to 2 power k minus 1, then I need to show that there is no other coset and that that is the kind of thing. Okay? So this is an important point to kind of know that number of odd weight code words and number of even weight code words are equal. Okay, the opposite is a one more case that is possible is it can have code can have only even weight code words. That is also possible. Okay, remember that. Okay, so the next question is a little bit more interesting. So you have a code C. Okay, so if it, it, it's non-trivial in the following sense, okay, what, in what sense is non-trivial? Uh, no, no coordinate is, uh, is zero all the time in all code words. Okay, so in all code words. You understand what I'm saying? So, so in in no position. So C is, uh, every code word is C1, C2, Cn, right? No, for no CI, will, will all, in all code words, will CI be 0. Okay, so at least one code word, C will be non-zero. Okay? So that is the thing. So now you have to show that the number of code words with the ith position 0 equals the number of code words with the ith position 1. Okay, so that is what, is, what you have to show. Okay, so you have to show, okay, so suppose I say C0 is set of all code words in C, C i equals maybe i here equals zero, and then C one i basically of all code words in C such that C i equals one. Okay, so what this non-triviality means is for all i, both of these are non-empty. Okay, that's what is given to you. That's the non-trivial nature of this code. So you have to show that C zero i equals C one i which equals uh, 2 power k minus 1. Okay. So here again you can use both proofs, you can use the gender matrix. If, if a particular position is not 0 always, it means that a particular column of the gender matrix is not 0. Okay. No column of the gender matrix is 0. So you pay, take all the rows with a particular column being 0 in the top and then 1 in the bottom, then look at all the message vectors and count how you can get a 1 in the particular location, you can do that, okay, so that's that's one proof, okay, so you understand what I am saying, so you take gender matrix, look at the ith column, okay, the ith column cannot be all 0, what happens if the ith column is all 0, then that position will always be 0, so that's not correct, so the ith column you can arrange it so that you have zeros for a while and then you have ones after that, okay, now you ask what message will give me 0 in the ith position. Okay, and then what message will give me 1 in the i position. You can see the quick counting will give you this result, 2 power k minus 1. Again, the odd number, even number will come. You will get 2 power k minus 1 without any problem. Yes? Can a non-trivial code? Okay. No, it cannot have. It cannot have. That is also, I mean, you can show it. You can even show it for a non-linear non, non -linear code. For linear codes, is much easier. 
because of this fact of the linear code of okay. So this implies clearly that the dimension is k, right? You see that? C is an nk code. Once you show this dimension is k, but even for a non-linear code that is true, it's, it's a slightly more fancy combinatorial property, but for non-linear codes also it's true. Okay? Alright, so, so how do you prove it in the other way? You remember our other method? This is coset method. How do you prove this in the coset method? Okay, in the coset method, you have to show that this is a subcode. Okay? And you have to show that this is a coset of C0 out. Okay, again, we use the same proof. Okay, and the union of these two is equal to C. So the coset partitioning is basically C0i and C1i. So each of them should have size 2 part k. Okay, so that's the coset method for this. Okay, the general matrix method is also nice. The coset method is also equally good. Okay, so you can use it. Okay. By induction? Oh, I don't know. But why would you? I mean, yeah, you can do induction also, maybe. Yeah, so you look at that and then say, I don't know if induction is a clean method. Because. Okay, 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 okay. I see what you Yeah, I think maybe you can do it that way. You can do it that way. But then the indexing will be slightly complicated because if you have an NK code which is non trivial or has at least one odd weight code word, there can be like a K minus 1 code. So, so then you have to be, uh, assume all K minus 1 dimensions. So maybe you can do it. Yeah, induction might work. But I think direct method is also nice. It's not too hard. Okay, so let's go to the 10th question. So, okay, so these kind of questions are bread and butter, okay, so it's, it's quite important. So, so let me do the 11th question first, 11th and 10th are similar, 10th is a bit more painful, so I'll leave it as an exercise, 11th we'll do in class, okay, so this is bread and butter question, you should know how to do this. Here's the problem, uh, here's the problem, so let's see, so this is a part check matrix, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. 101 0 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 how do you do maximum likelihood decoding over a binary symmetric channel? So that is the question. Okay, so you have you are using this code against use about use this code in you know BSC the transition probability P. So how do you design a maximum likelihood decoder? Okay, so what is the maximum likelihood decoder? Okay, how do you do it? It's a syndrome decoder. Okay, so the maximum likelihood decoder for a BSC is basically the syndrome decoder. Okay, so remember you can do it in so many different ways. This, this nearest neighbor decoding is also maximum likelihood, but for linear codes we 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 came down to this notion of a syndrome decoder, right? So the syndrome decoder is the easiest thing that you can write down. So now we have to come up with the syndrome table. So how does the syndrome table work? Okay, so you have to make this table between S and E cap. So how do you define that? S is a how many bits are there in S? Three bits, right? So how many three bit combinations are there? 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. Okay, so there are eight three bit possibilities. What is the definition of E cap? Lowest weight such that lowest weight vector such that x times E cap equals equals what? S, right? So that's the definition of this error vector, okay? So how do you write it down? How do you get 0, 0, 0? All 0, right? Okay, what about 0, 0, 1? I'm sorry? 0, 0, 1, okay, so when I say 0, 0, 1, 
So I should be careful here, right? So this is a row vector. So let's say this is a transpose. Okay, so it's zero zero one one in the last position. Okay, so how do you write it? So this also transpose here is row vector and column vector. Okay, so here's the here's the error vector. So let's select the other guys before we come to zero zero one. The other guys are quite easy. This guy is just one zero 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 one one is. And one zero zero is just this guy. One zero one is okay. One one zero 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 one zero zero zero, and this guy is all zeros in the last one. So here you can do multiple things. So this is one choice. Okay, if you don't like it, you can take something else also. But you should have a weight two error vector. Okay, so that's the simple thing. So how will the maximum likelihood decoder work? If you're transmitting a code word C. And some error vector is getting added to it by the BSC. Okay, so this is from the BSC P. You remember, right? That's our equivalent model, the error vector model. You get R. What is your first step? You compute H times R transpose to get S transpose, and then you look it up and get E cap, and then you do what? Add e cap to r and get your c cap. Okay, so that is your maximum likelihood decoder picture, and that uh, that is ML decoder. Okay, so now the question is, how do you compute probability of block errors? How do you compute probability that c not equal to c cap? Sorry. Okay, so yeah, so 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 okay. So let's say how do you compute probability of C equals C cap? So he's saying you can use this table to do it, and you have to be a little bit careful here, so you can write down a lot of things. But finally, one of the properties of this decoder is what are the error vectors E for which this will perform successful decoding? Okay, so let me see if we can answer this question. So what error vectors E will this decoder perform successful decoding? I'm sorry. Okay, so I mean, you can give a more precise answer than that. You can give a very precise answer to this question. Uh, when will when will it give you exact decoding? When will C be equal to C cap? Yeah, when only when E equals E belongs to one of these E caps in this table. Only when the actual E occurred, that occurred is exactly equal to one of the E caps in this table. Will you can you possibly get successful decoding? Yes or no? Because we are only XORing with E cap, right? Our XOR E cap. We are always declaring that the error is from this set. So the only way we have successful decoding is if E belongs to this set. Okay, so that you can easily compute. So those two events are the same. So if you think of probability that C equals E cap, it is the same as probability that E belongs to. Okay. The E caps in the in table. Okay, so what's the probability that an error that occurs is equal to these things? Okay, what is the probability of all zero error vector? One minus p raised to the power six. What's the probability of the next guy? One minus p power four times p squared. Okay, so all you have to do is count the number of weight zero E caps. Count the number of weight one e caps. Count the number of weight two e caps, and so on. And then you can quickly write down the probability expression. Okay. So how many weight zero e caps do you have? Only one of them. How many weight one e caps do you have? Six of them. How many weight two you have? One of them. So all you have to do is to write that expression for this. This is basically one minus p plus six plus six p one minus p plus five plus p squared times one minus p. So for four, sorry. Okay. So what's the probability that C is not equal to C cap? One minus. Okay. So that's the uh, that's the area. So what happens to so so let's say what's the probability that C not equal to C cap? Just two one minus this guy, right? So one minus three plus six minus six p into one minus three plus five minus three squared two one minus four. Four. Sorry. Suppose p is tending to zero. Okay, so as p tends to zero, what happens to this expression? P is becoming really, really small. Hmm? 
zero. I mean, I mean, of course, you can say zero, but I want an expression as a function of p. How far out does it decay with p when p is very, very, very small? Yeah, so you can give me an exact expression. What will it be? See, the p square expression is what's going to dominate, right? So you can see one will cancel, okay? And then 6p will also cancel with the 6p from the next term. So the p square will remain, and that will how that is how this will decay to zero as p square, okay? So what will be that exact thing? You can say what is the p square expression here? What is the p square expression here? 6p times what is the p square expression in this term? 6p times 5p, right? So it's, it's plus, no? Here it is plus, here it is minus, minus what? 6 choose 2 is what? 15 p square. So what about here? Minus p square. Okay, so the final expression will be 14 p square. Okay, plus order of p square. Okay, so small, smaller than p square. So when you say, okay, so forget about this, we go smaller. You didn't know this. Okay, so other terms will be p power 3 or higher terms. Okay. So that's what I meant by saying little o p square. Okay, so p power 3 or higher term. So the dominant term will be 14 p square. Is that okay? Okay, so that's that's one way of thinking about it. Alright, so this this is this is what I call a bread and butter problem in linear codes. Okay, if you learn about linear block codes and syndrome decoding, those are problems that you should be able to retain legally. Okay, so this is one of those things. Okay, so the next question, I'm sorry. Error vectors should be obtained invariably one of these things. Should be obtained, doesn't it? Yeah, so the interpretation is only if the error vector. Yeah, so when p becomes very, very small, what is the most likely error vector? You almost always you'll get all zero. Once in a while you can get weight one. All the weight one error vectors are covered here. Right? Very rarely will you get weight two. And that will be the that will be the probability p square. Right? That's what it is. is it p the probability of uh, having a one or a zero? Right? One or a zero in what? In e, right? Each bit of the error vector e is one or zero. If one with probability p, zero with probability one minus. Is it okay? So, so putting p square makes sense, okay? So it's, it's, it's as p goes, p tends to zero. This will also go to zero. Only. If p is zero. You're not getting any flips. You'll always get all zero error vector, which you can correct. Okay. So, so it's so. okay. All right. So, so the next question is uh, the next question I'm going to do is basically question number thirteen. So all we're doing on time. One thirty-five. Oh, okay. Okay, so let's, let me do question number 13. It's a, it's a slight departure from the decoding kind of question, but anyway, it's an interesting question. Suppose you have C being a linear code, very simple question, right. and you have a vector u which does not belong to C. Okay, you have a linear code and u that does not belong to C. You take C and then the coset generated by u, okay, and you take the union of these two. Okay. You, you have to show so take u not and c you have to show that this union this is actually a linear code ok so you take a code and take one of its cosets take the union of those two you will get a linear code ok so this is a very easy thing to prove how do you show that this is a linear code you take any two code words to XR them you should be inside this ok so if, if two of your vectors that you take are inside C itself then what will happen it will anyway be inside C if two of you uh, two of the uh, words that you, vectors that you take are inside the coset then what happens X or then you come back to C if one vector is in C or, and the other vector is in U plus C what happens you end up in U plus C ok so whatever choice you make for the two vectors you will be within this set and that's enough to show that this is a linear code it is quite easy to prove this ok so what will be the dimension of this code 
k plus 1, right? So remember that. So do an NKD code. This will be same n k plus 1. What about the Just think about what you can say about D. Okay. So you probably can't say much. It's too complicated. You are taking a vector u and then adding up. So you might say what happens to the minimum weight code word, but there could be some other larger weight code word which will like suddenly XR with this u and give you a smaller weight. Okay. So it's, it's difficult to say anything about minimum distance. Okay. So minimum distance is just close for a toss. So in general, you'll see in all these constructions, keeping the block length same, if you try to increase minimum, increase the dimension, in general, minimum distance you lose control over. Okay. But if you do the opposite, okay, start with the block length, same block length, you try to decrease dimension in your modification. In general, you can see that you get a good handle on minimum distance, at least you can say greater than or equal to something. Okay, so it's always like that. So, so that's right. Okay, so the next problem is also a little bit more uh, theoretical kind of thing. It, it asks you to show the following. Okay, so how do you show, what is the strategy to show a proof like this? So suppose you want to show the dual of the code its dual equals the code itself. Okay. So how do you show something like this? Yeah, so you have to show the only way to show these things is you consider an element of the left hand side. You have to show it also belongs to the right hand side. And then you take an element of the right hand side, you have to show it belongs to the left hand side. Okay. So for that the belonging part you have to use the definition. Okay. So C is some code, there is no definition to it, it's just a linear subspace, it's given to you. What is the definition of C per per? What does it mean? What is the definition of C per? So that's all V such that V dot C equals 0 for all C in C, right? That's the definition of C per. So what's the definition of C per per? How do we define it? So that's all U such that U dot B is 0 for all V in C per. Okay, so these are the definitions. Okay, so don't work with anything else that is not given. Okay, so this is the definition. From here, you have to show that if an element belongs to C per per, then it also belongs to C. Okay, so how do you show that? Any ideas? Okay, so think about it. I'm not going to go into the details here. It's it's, it's a bit technical, as in you have to say argue that this has to happen, that has to happen. All right. Okay, so think about how you might want to prove it. It's, it's 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 not too easy, but just writing down might be painful. But it's not very relevant to error control codes as such. It's a standard result in linear linear vector spaces. You can prove it in so many different ways. I'm gonna I'm gonna skip the details here. Not we don't have too much time. But, but think about how to do. It. All right. So we'll do the part B. Part B is a little bit more interesting because it, it has a coding theory connotation. Okay. So suppose I have C D. Okay, suppose I have C and D being two linear codes. Okay, so let's say linear codes in 0, 1, n. Okay, block length has to be the same. Okay, that has to be the same. So I'm going to define something called C plus B. Okay, so set of all C, C plus B is basically set of all U plus B, U and C, B and D. Alright, we are fine. Okay, so this is the C plus D. Okay, so the first thing is, is C plus D a linear code? Is this a linear code? Yeah, I mean that's easy to show. You take U1 plus V1, U2 plus V2. What is the sum of those two? U1 plus U2 plus V1 plus V2. U1 plus U2 belongs to C again. V1 plus V2 belongs to D again. So you put go back to the C plus. Okay, so U3 plus D is a linear code. The question is, what is its dual? Okay. Okay, so I'll give you another way to think about it. Suppose you take a generator matrix for C. So let's say C is generator matrix is G1, GC, okay. And then generator matrix for D is GD. What will be a generator matrix for C plus B? GC plus GD? 
No, don't go to the dual directly. Answer this question first. Okay. What is the dimension of C plus B? Okay. Well, C and B don't have the same dimension. Dimension of C plus dimension of B. Yeah, so it's a bit more complicated to come up with the dimension of C plus D, but you can come up with the generator matrix for C plus D quite easily. So what is the generator matrix for C plus D? You can do this. This is a better thing. Okay. This is the best way to do generator matrix. Don't say G C plus G D D. G C plus G D is not correct. Okay. What is wrong with G C plus G D? You are forcing the same message bit for each of these things. That's not really needed. Okay. Each of them can be different. So G C G D is the generator matrix for C plus D. But remember that the rank for G C G D you have no control over. So that's why dimension is a bit more hard. It's basically rank of this. Okay. So it can be some. There may be some linearly dependent rows here. So that's why I'm saying you will take dimension of C plus dimension of D minus dimension of C intersect D. C intersect D is also a linear code. Okay. So that that's something you have to do. Okay. But now if I think in terms of dual. It's very easy. So, what is the dual? What code word belongs to the dual of C plus D? It has to be orthogonal to all the rows in G C. It also has to be orthogonal to all the rows in G D. Okay. That means what? It belongs to the dual of C. It also belongs to the dual of D. And from there, you can quickly conclude that this has to be equal to yeah, C per intersect. So it's an easy result if you think in terms of generator matrix like this carefully. Okay, but you can also prove this more directly. Okay, that's also possible. You can prove this more directly. It's not it's not really that hard to show this very directly. Okay, so you take a vector on the left hand side; it has to be on the right hand side. Okay, if you take a vector on C plus D top, which means what? It's, it's orthogonal to all vectors in C plus D. So you simply take V equals zero. Means it's orthogonal to all vectors in C. You take u equals zero, it's orthogonal to all vectors in D. So it belongs to C prime intersect D prime. Now, if you take a vector in C prime intersect D prime, then you can take u plus v dot that to be u dot that plus v dot that, and u dot that is zero, v dot that is also zero, so zero plus zero is zero. So you see, you get inclusion in both sides. So these two sets have to be the same. So you can also prove it that way if you like. Okay, so both ways are okay. The second one is probably a little bit more rigorous than the first one. But both are okay. Is it okay? C plus D. It's not concatenation. I'm not concatenating. Bl dimension remains the same. See, I'm doing u plus v, right? The block length remains the same, not dimension. Block length remains the same. It's not a concatenation. It's a little bit different from concatenating. Yeah, concatenating the basis, but that could be the way to think about it. Okay. So maybe if you like, I'll write down the final proof of this. Okay. So if you want to prove it. So you say let x belong to C plus D top. Okay, what does that mean? That implies x dot u plus v equals zero for all u and c and v and d. Okay, so in particular, take d equals zero. You know, zero belongs to d, right? Okay, I am putting underscore somewhere, not doing it somewhere else. So sorry for that. Okay, hopefully it's notation is okay. So you take v equals zero, and you get x dot u equals zero for all u and c. Similarly, you take u equals zero, you will get x dot. So what what does it mean to say x dot u equals zero for all u and c? That implies x is in c top, right? And then you take u equals zero, which will imply x dot v equals zero for all v in D, and that implies x belongs to D purpose. Okay, that's the definition, right? It belongs to D purpose. So from those two together, that implies x belongs to C purpose intersect D purpose. Okay, and then. On the other side, inclusion. So, so that 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 concludes the uh, thing that C plus D top is contained in C top intersect D top. Okay, so now we have to show the opposite containment. For that, you start with X in C top intersect D top. Okay, now if you take X dot U plus V, okay, 
the u is in c in c sorry and b is in d what will you get here x dot u plus x dot d what is this k this is 0 plus 0 which is 0 this one plus x belongs to c plus b so Okay, and that that concludes everything. Okay, so that's Q. Yes, I'm going to skip a few final steps. Okay, so that implies C C, C perp intersect D perp as it is contained in C plus D whole perp and those two sets. Of C. Okay, so that's how you formally prove these things. You try a similar formal proof for the first part. Okay, C perp perp equals C. But be very careful. Don't use the result already. Okay, so you have to be very very careful. Okay, so so that's the only thing you have to do. But you have to use the properties of the dual very carefully. Okay, so in a way you are trying to find the dual of C perp. You have to show that. All right. So, so we have about five minutes, less than five minutes maybe. So, oh, but anyway, today it take till two, right? So we have some time. Let's go. Okay. So the next question is the following. So there are fifteen A and B. So basically here. There are two generator matrices given, and you have to show the codes generated by these two are equal. Okay, so what are equal and codes? I have to define equal and codes for you. Okay, so two codes are said to be equal and if a permutation of position can go from one to the other. Okay. So C and C1 and C2 are equivalent. Okay, let me write it down carefully. This is a bit imprecise. Okay, if you have two codes, C1 and C2 are equivalent, if there exists a permutation pi such that right, C2 equals C, so write it down carefully. C two equals C pi one, C pi two, so on till C pi n subset what? C one C two C n equals down to C one. Okay. So basically, what I mean is, we list out all the code words of C one, and then do a column permutation. Basically, permutation of the positions. You should get all the permutations of C2. Okay, so if there is a permutation, okay, so pi is like a standard notation for permutation. So this is the permutation. What is the permutation? So one to one map from one two three one to itself. Okay, so that's it. So permutation. So that from one to the other. So that these two these codes are called equivalent. Why why are they equivalent? It really doesn't matter what code you use. Right? So you just send either code, you are going to get the same same kind of problem. Okay, so so if given two generator matrices. How do you conclude whether the two codes are equivalent or not? Oh, if you want to find permutation, it's a bit more difficult. See, first you have to reduce it to some standard form. Okay, so the best thing is to, if you can get, yeah. So you can try various things. One one easy way to show is that you take each row of the first generator matrix, show that it is a code word of the second generator matrix. Okay, and both of them are full rank, and that's enough. That's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it, one thing which will facilitate this is, you reduce both the code words, both the generator matrices to systematic form, and then these things are easier. You see, suddenly that some you might be able to quickly spot it. But a foolproof method is what? You ensure that each row of G is actually a code word of G prime, and vice versa. Okay, so that that will make sure that both codes are kind of equal. And we have to pass all about permutation, right? So so permutation is also there. Right, each each code word under the same permutation becomes belongs to G prime. So permutation is a bit more complicated to check. So I would suggest the best thing to do is reduce to systematic form. Okay, so if it is small enough, reduce to systematic form. You might be able to quickly do. It. Okay, so you have to reduce to systematic form and then see if there is some pattern that you are observing. Quickly you can find this. Okay, so that's that's one more problem. We'll stop here and I'll send you a mail about uh, tomorrow morning. In case we don't meet tomorrow, we'll meet again on Monday. Bye. -bye.